it was actually the, the actual spark of the idea was me playing Lego with my son. He made a little Lego figure of a robot. And while he was making it, I just suddenly thought, you know, what is what, what would it be if I could build an artificially intelligent robot that created artificially intelligent art that commented on the rise of artificial intelligence. It was extraordinary, the interest in our project. And as a result of that, it completely bloomed, you know. Um, and I went back to the press and said, why is it that you guys are so madly interested in ADA? We called it ADA after ADA Lovelace, the first computer program. And they said, well, we thought that robots would be delivering pizzas or perhaps doing Amazon logistics. We didn't think robots would be doing creativity. And as you, as you proved now that these are genuinely creative algorithms operating with ADA, this is a significant um, step in what we thought was a sacred area of being a human. Sure. But I've got my son, my oldest son is nine and, and, and my daughter's three. Um, so what should I be doing as a father to try, kind of, you always want to try and future proof your kids or whatever, kind of, what, what, what should I be doing as a parent to, to, let's say, adapt to this rapid change that's going on? I don't have any answers. I think my and my tactic at the moment is to simply adopt or promote a habit that you want to learn. And I, I think if you can if you can just instill that habit, then whatever they need to learn in or have to learn about, that there's that appetite. And because otherwise, I think there will be this opt out. And I sort of have this phrase that you're either going to try and control them or they're going to be controlling you. You've got to make that choice quite early on. If you don't, then you're going to be the ones that are being controlled by yeah. them. And 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 I think. It, 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 it's that I think it's going to be that differential. It, it may be overly think, simplistic, but 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 that's sort of my attitude to it all, really. I think you're right. I, I think Darwin said uh, it's not about how strong you are and how fit you are. I think he said it's how uh, uh, your ability to adapt yeah. that will make you successful. Yeah. So the ability to adapt is the critical skill, I guess. And it, who, who, who controls her dreams or who controls her creativity? Is it, is it the programmers that are feeding her or is it that she's learning within herself? Kind of maybe this is, I, I still haven't quite got my head around this, this aspect. She has her source material mainly through looking. She has cameras in her eyes and like a normal artist, do I say, looks at something and is able to draw it. So she can do your portrait. And what's really, really amazing is even if she saw the same th scene twice, she would do different, a different image. So I work in the sort of meeting facilitation and, and trying to make meetings more purposeful and, and, and um, yeah, have bigger impact. So in, if you could sum up kind of how, how do you see AI or machine learning supporting um, purposeful meetings or even in many ways, just, just, just people communicating um, as a whole? I think the biggest thing that machine learning is able to do is reveal the invisible. What they're able to do is see patterns that humans can't. And that's why they're going to be so good for efficiency. So I think, I think we're in for a very, very interesting period of disruption because the insight that these, uh, what AI is going to be able to do, and it will be the people who've got the technology. It's going to be the pa the power is going to be in the technology. Mm -hmm. Again, it's important to control it rather than control you. I think kind of, I have a vision of a four day work week, but I just hope that people do get to work those four days. But if they don't have to work those four days, that there's, there's support mechanisms and there are a net in place, let's say, to, to, to help those that maybe have in, in many ways lost a job. Because I sort of thought that the caring industry is one that's relatively safe, but, but certainly not. No. I don't see that even slightly. And you're talking about a four-day week. I don't think it's going to be a four-day week. I think it'd be a nothing week. But I, I, I think, as I say, the, the, all the, there's going to be huge change. And I think ADA is about asking the ethical considerations for that change. Mm -hmm. And so ADA is just basically shining a light and a mirror onto what's already happening. It's, we're already there. Our phones are already gathering huge data from us constantly. Mm -hmm. Ada is currently at the United Nations. She's got an exhibition with the United Nations at this very moment. We're, um, she's speaking at the House of Lords uh, next year for, uh, again, addressing issues of ethics within AI. 
So, so next year Ada is very busy. Kind of, how does Ada's busyness and exposure compare to some of the other great artists that that you you? Oh, uh, it's been a crazy, crazy year. 2021 is an intensely busy year. We've got ten, um, seven uh, museum show events next year alone, uh, right from, as I say, from Taiwan to the Middle East to, to America. Uh, to have museum interest at this level it, this early is extraordinary. Picasso took 10 years to get a first museum show. Uh, Damien Hirst took five years to get a, a first museum show. Ada would have done 10 museum visits within a year and a half. Um, we are wanting this project to be something that is actually empowering people to be able to question and call out on unethical use. And we're very passionate about that and we're incredibly excited. So as a project, it couldn't, it couldn't be better for, um, and we, we chose the art world to have these discussions because of course people are more accepting to look at that sort of stuff. If we went down a political route, you know, people are straight away, no, no, that's not for me, uh, you know. Whereas the openness of the art world is enabling people to actually get involved with their proper... proper well, uh, probably so for politicians, they might even feel threatened. Um, but anyway, that's another hour debate in some ways. So yeah. I, I'm very conscious of time, but I think it is fascinating and I really do think you're right that art can can shine a spotlight on on issues that need to be discussed and um i will follow ada's story very closely and i hope to one day to to to, to view her work in a gallery but for those that have taken the time to watch this really interesting talk um how can they um follow more about ada and, and your story yeah, you can, there's a newsletter on the website ada.adarobot.com so just go and have a look at that 